All right. Ugh. I'm back with a new printing calculator. This one, slightly cheaper quality than the last one. But it seems pretty happy. The reason why I say this one's cheaper than the other one is that it uh, takes less components. If you've watched the other video, which I'll link, um, all of the digits are represented along the whole length of it, and when it rotates, it sort of locks each digit in place. This one, however, seems to just move the digits along. Now there's two different, I guess, glyph wheels? There's a one for digits and I think one for characters. Let's see here. Yeah, MT, all sorts of stuff. I haven't actually tried to print with this. Uh, I guess I could give that a go. Let's, uh, sure, we can use this. Nope, I've given up on trying to feed paper in there. So next up is taking the thing apart. Do, 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 do. Okay. The nice thing with this is it's all five volts, so I should be able to hack this a little bit easier. Um, hoping I can just tap into whatever transistors and logic are on the board. Instead of with the last one, um, all the digits were controlled with a large uh, integrated circuit that would switch to 12 volts for me, and that was just a little bit too much effort. Okay. Also, there should be less I.O. on this, because again, there's fewer things to control. And there seem to be snappies. Uh, it seems like Bottom is where the snaps, there we go. The bottom is the housing for the snaps. Oh, okie doke, this is gonna come apart kinda weird. Oh, okay, that's not so bad. Oh, boo! <laughs> so everything's controlled with a chip on board. Uh. Well, so much for that. Uh, there's not a lot for me to tap into. There's two transistors here. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna take this deeper apart and try and figure it out. All right, I've gotten all this figured out now. So what I did is I hooked up some limit switches to the transistors we have here and played around with it for a while. So the pinout is here. So let's move this out of the way. Um, of the eight connectors here, we've got two that are uh, five volts, so VCC. And then the solenoid, it's, um, it's a little clutch. So the clutch is active low, so when you pull this to ground, that will um, engage a gear to the drive motor. And uh, the drive motor itself is on the other side here, so when this is driven uh, low, it will run. So right now, I've got them hooked up to these limit switches. So that's my uh, drive motor, and that's responsible for things like feed. Let's see if I can it down safely here. So, nope. <laughs> you go over here, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, cool. So this is responsible for, I guess, driving it. All of the major mechanical force is going to be handled by this motor. And then the clutch, when it engages the gear, stamps, and you can hear it click. 
So whenever it engages, it's going to push it to the paper. But if you time it just right, it will also click it over to the next spot. I'm clearly not able to time this quite right. So those are the two pieces that sort of control it. Uh, the next four wires here are dealing with um, proper timing so that things engage at the right time. So there's this protective cover on it that I yanked off because I couldn't figure out how it worked just via electric means. Let's take a battery out here. There we go. Um, so if we turn this up, you can see here that these rest on the disc. It's a little awkward. Go in there. So they rest on this disc here and we'll know at what state um, it's in. So to get the whole package working you'll have to figure out um, how these will wire up. At first I thought it might be quadrature encoding but at second glance here it more looks like uh, one is to show the revolution and then the other two might be for figuring out um, at what point it is. There's really no reason for quadrature encoding here because it can't go in two different directions. Um, normally you'd use that when you've got like a scroll wheel um, or in a mouse, uh, physical or otherwise, um, because you can do quadrature encoding with uh, photo interceptors, photo interrupters. But um, you can also do it manually with, with these sorts of things. So that seems to be the lot of it. Um, now with uh, my testing the logic here, all of these stayed um, to VCC without dropping low. And I don't know if that was just because I was forcing it manually, uh, like overriding it or not. But these, I couldn't quite figure out the timings on. Um, what I could do in the future is take a logic analyzer and attach it to the um, the gates of the transistor, gates of the transistors, and these four here, and see how the timing of each sort of made sense depending on what numbers it was printing out. Um, but I think to do that, I would want to get a calculator that was actually working, uh, so with paper and all that good stuff. Um, but if you want to hack on these yourself, um, these are apparently an Epson, uh, let's flip it on. It's an Epson, uh, sort of printing interface M31. I don't know if it's a model number or not, but one of the easy ways to tell, um, that it has one of these modules inside of it is it's got this, uh, the motor is pretty clear to see through the mechanism. So if you're at a thrift shop like uh, Valley Villager Savers or Salvation Army, you can look into the calculator and see that this is, um, this is the mechanism. So you can just like look right in and see that. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna go the next step and uh, figure out the timings on this. I might, it's actually pretty straightforward, but uh, I think that's gonna be it for tonight because I'm gonna try and buy another one of these before, um, before I try again. But they were pretty cheap. I mean, I paid $3.99 for this one. So it's a pretty good, um, pretty good model to play with because I found even at my local Valley Village, I found two um, with the same kind of mechanism and that was just in uh, a week or two. I guess the only other downsides are the the ink for this thing is pretty minimal so it's on this little ink roller so I don't know if you find one if it's going to have enough ink for you. Uh, the past one had an actual ink ribbon uh, dual color ink ribbon so this is not as good but yeah, uh, I think there's definitely potential to hack this further. But I'm going to say that's it for reverse engineering um, 
the electronics for now. And the next step is just figuring out the mechanism and how to get at what point you have to turn the solenoid on so that it will, you know, move the, the characters over. At what point you have to turn the solenoid on to stamp the exact digit you want. Because um, it, it's like clockwork. So next steps are really just figuring out how to run these. Um, and maybe I'll just go online and see if I can find um, someone who's already gone the, uh, the extra mile to figure that out already. But yeah. If you want to start playing with these, um, I'd say this is a pretty good calculator to start with. It was the Casio HR8L printing calculator. But again, there's a bunch of different ones that, uh, that happen to have this mechanism, so happy hacking. Talk to you later.